I love Sibelius. Genuinely, I've used it for years and years and I really just, whenever I get that window up, I just really enjoy myself. It's just that emotion of great pleasure when I sit down and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna ring something. It really, ah, I like it so much. That being said, I am aware that it's not the easiest software to use. It is a software that has a bit of a learning curve. Before I did this episode, I was thinking, hmm, maybe I should do like a tutorial, like how to use Sibelius. But doing my research, I found that actually Avid, the company that owns Sibelius, um, has a pretty good tutorial on their YouTube channel. So I thought, okay, well, that's just pointless then, because they've, they've done it already. Uh, so I thought, what can I do that is gonna be helpful, but that isn't just like a literal tutorial. Well, Sibelius is a program that has a few quirks. It's, while it is a very powerful program, there's stuff about it that's not obvious, and there's stuff about it that you kind of, you get used to through using it loads. So I thought what I could do was to do a couple of episodes on uh, my tips for using Sibelius, for dealing with those little quirks. The first episode is going to be about stuff you do before you get into the score, and then there'll be stuff like basic functionality, stuff to do with playback, layout, and there'll be three tips in each episode. If you want to look at a specific tip, then I've got the links down in the description. Without any further ado, here's the first tip. It's kind of obvious, but it's kind of, it bears repeating. Don't work in Sibelius until you know how to use it. And I say this because it's kind of tempting when you want to start out arranging to just jump right in, to just open it up and then you get confronted with the, you know, the Sibelius page and it's confusing, uh, it's not obvious how to input notes and there are different ways of doing it, some of which take like a long time. Just to avoid frustration and having your workflow killed off by just not knowing how to do things, um, just learn how to use it first. It's actually, it's quite easy once you kind of get going, but there is a bit of a learning curve. Fortunately, there are ways of learning it. So when I started using Sibelius, I just used the tutorial and I'll show you how to use the, the tutorial in a minute. You can also check out uh, Avid's YouTube channel. I'll link it because they have a quite good tutorial on how to use Sibelius, how to do all the basic stuff. Um, I'll just link it. You can use that and uh, they still do have a pretty strong tutorial in the program itself. So let me just show you quickly how to find the tutorial and then uh, you should be good to go. It took me, when I started learning, it took me about, you know, a couple of hours every evening for about two weeks and then I knew pretty much how to use it. So yeah, definitely a bit of a learning curve, but it's going to pay off in spades when you so you because you'll avoid sitting there feeling like an idiot because you don't know how to change a crotchet into a quaver. When you open up Sibelius, this is the first thing that pops up. Uh, this is the quick start window and it's uh, it's essentially where you find everything you need to get started. So it defaults to the new school window and this is just where you choose the, um, the instruments that you want to use for your score. What we're interested in here is the learn tab. You go there and there's a few different things here. You've got uh, some videos. Uh, what I used when I started was this one, tutorials. You click this and it just opens up this uh, PDF. Now this tutorial uh, just takes you through different steps of, um, you know, sort of different levels of what Sibelius is. So you've got one uh, project file, which is all about, you know, simple stuff like opening scores, playing back the scores. And then you have more advanced stuff like creating new ones, um, writing in uh, Klef's key signatures, etc. And it gets progressively more advanced. So when I started out, I just did these. You know, if that doesn't appeal to you, there's always the Avid uh, YouTube channel and you can check that out. But I mean, this is really how you learn to use it. Um, all of these also come with like project files that you use. And I think they're found in sort of your default schools folder. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, I'd say the very first thing you need to do when you get to various. Do the tutorial, learn how to use it, and you'll be glad that you did. Tip number two. 
And this is also uh, kind of basic functionality stuff, but it's going to save you so much time. Use a numeric keypad. And if you don't have a numeric keypad on your keyboard, get an external numeric keypad. If you're like me and you work on your laptop, then laptops normally don't have numeric keypads. So you can just go on Amazon. This is one that I got. It's really cheap. It's kind of plasticky, not really that high quality. The cable's kind of coming off. I've had this for quite a few years. But this is going to be a lot of use to you when you do, um, when you do just like everything in Sibelius. Let me show you. So when you get into Sibelius, this is the keypad. And you might notice if you compare it to a keyboard keypad that it has the exact same structure. And it keeps all the note lengths, sharps, flats, etc., various bits of articulation all on here. And if you cycle through these pages, it has pretty much all the um, different varieties of notes that you'll need. So you've got you know, much longer, shorter notes here. You've got different different types of stems and tremolos, um, more bits of articulation and stops. There's some jazz stuff here, like um, scoop or fall, or my favorite, doit. Uh, repeat marks, arpeggios, and also double flats, double sharps if you need those. Even like quarter sharps and flats if you do that sort of music. This is all um, linked to your keypad, and so if you're typing in stuff, say I'm just writing out this really nice melody here. It's D, E, F, down the octave, and then I decide, okay, that should in fact be um, quaver, then I go, boom, and it's on the keypad, and then I can use uh, the other ones. These will be a semicolon. There we go. This is just me using the keyboard. Don't have to press anything here. It saves time. So get used to using the keypad. Um, you can, and I do sometimes just press it using the mouse if my hand happens to be on the mouse. But you can imagine every time you want to change something, clicking, going over here, and then going back. Takes time rather than just, oh, it's a crotchet now. Oh, it's a quaver now. Send me quaver. Ooh, now it's back to a minimum. So yeah, if you just get into the habit of using the keypad, you save time. Oh, and as a bonus to this tip, get uh, a MIDI controller keyboard. This is the one I use. This is the um, Korg, I think it's called, yeah, Korg Micro Key. It has three octaves and it has just like a couple of wheels, but I mean, you wouldn't really use this for much, except for notation software, it's extremely useful. Because, I mean, you have several ways of inputting notes in Sibelius. You could, you know, you could just type in A, B, C, D, E, and it'll give it, you know, it'll give you that note. And then you, you'll have to move it into the right octave and stuff. But if you have a MIDI keyboard, you can just play them in. It goes beyond just like adding the notes. It's also nice to have it set up so you can, you know, try stuff out. Because you can just play through stuff on your keyboard um, and hear it back from the software. And it just um, means you won't have to like go back and forth between the piano and the software. So yeah, and this one, I've had it for, I don't know, six years, like quite a long time. And you know, I'm still using it. It's like a one-off investment really. You don't need a big one. Uh, you know, a small one's fine. You can take it with you. You can stick it in your backpack if you like working outside of your, you know, flat or office. It does save a lot of time, you know, you know, it does save a lot of time uh, as compared to the alternative methods like inputting with the mouse. So yeah, definitely MIDI controller, very important. Okay, tip number three and last tip of this video. Put as much information about your score or arrangement into the quick start window before you start editing it in Sibelius proper. The reason why it's useful to do this is because sometimes inputting this information afterwards can be a little bit, uh, maybe not tricky, but a bit annoying. So stuff like if you put in the title in the, um, the quick start window, not only does it put the title on every page, but it also um, adds it as like a wildcard. And a wildcard is just a bit of information in the score that you can use as a substituted text. So say you're working on a very like complicated score and you want to change the title of the song. If you just change it, you know, directly, that might just affect one page. 
But if you have it as a wildcard and you just change it in the information, it'll change all of that automatically for you. You can also avoid um, another common thing I see, which is that people forget to put in the tempo and they, instead they will use um, the transport panel. Uh, I'll show you what I mean. Um, because this it's, this is a pet hate of mine. It's just, it's quite annoying. <laughs> uh, but let me just show you. Once you've selected your instruments, you'll be taken to this page. I've already put in some info here. It's uh, fairly straightforward. So I usually don't bother too much with this stuff, but you want to put in your time signature. If you don't, it does default to 4-4. Four, uh, four, four. Uh, earlier versions of Sibelius would just like put no key signature, uh, no time signature in, which was annoying. Uh, but these days it does default to 4-4, so you won't find yourself in a situation where there's no time signature unless you do so deliberately. Uh, you can have a pickup bar. Now, I recommend, unless you know for certain that you're absolutely going to use a pickup bar, don't put one in just yet. Just leave it open. You don't have to start your arrangement on bar 1. You could st I usually start it on bar 4. Uh, so then I have some space in front in case I want to change the intro or... You know, if I haven't decided on an intro, which is often the case, then I can uh, not end up in a situation where I suddenly want to get rid of a pickup bar. That is difficult. Uh, so just leave it out. Uh, you can add it in later. Tempo, you can write in what you want. Sibelius does uh, like playback. So you, if you write in stuff like Adagio, Allegro, etc., it will play back roughly the, the estimated tempo, but you can also put in a metronome mark. And because it's so easy to find out um, tempos these days, you've got metronomes built directly into Google search. Uh, I don't think there's any excuse to not put in a metronome mark anymore, unless you are looking to have very fluctuating tempo. Um, but that's just something you'll have to choose. Put in the key signature. If it's in C major, like the song I'm about to arrange, then you put that in or you can just choose anything here. Finally, uh, so if you put an info here, these will be kind of embedded in the score as wildcards. Uh, I'll get more into wildcards in the layout episode, but if you put information in here, it does put in stuff for you and uh, puts it on like all the different pages where it's needed. So I recommend if you have all this information, put it in. So you've got title here, songwriter. It's always good practice to put on the writers, I think. Um, and also if you're looking to like publish stuff, then you want to make sure that the songwriters are on there. And then you can write in any sort of other information you have. And then you just press create. And voila, you have, a, you know, a, a very good start. I mean, there's no notes yet, but this is looking good already. So just put, there we go. And now you can start putting in notes. So the, the thing I mentioned about the tempo. So some people, if they want to change the tempo of the song, instead of putting in a metronome mark, what I've seen people do is they will go into view panels and use transport. And there's this little slider here, which if you look at the BPM right here, you can drag this and ooh, it changes. Ooh, it can play back. And then they think, all right, so if I want faster, just drag it. If I want it 120, boom, 120. However, this is just for you to speed up or slow down you know, if you're just listening through sections of the song, for instance, to check if you've got a series of really slow or really fast chord changes and you just want to check that they're good, you would use this. However, do not use this for um, changing the tempo of the song because it doesn't write in anything. You need to write in the information like this. Um, if you need to change it, just, um, I mean, you can literally just copy this later in the score there's nothing here yet obviously you just stick it there and then you can change it here boom get rid of this text even there that's how you do it and that tells the musical director and the performers hey tempo is about to change uh this is not going to show up in your score so don't do this uh if you're changing the tempo of the song just do this if you're listening through and you want to check it at a slower or faster tempo than it's supposed to be played at so that's three tips on how to make your Sibelius life easier before you get into the actual score. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel and like me on Facebook so you can follow uh, you know, my projects and you know, not miss any updates. Next episode is gonna be about uh, sort of stuff 
that have to do with navigation and uh, how you, you know, work around the score. Uh, that isn't necessarily the arranging itself. And uh, yeah, that'll be out next week. So tune back in then for that episode. And be sure to share this episode with your friends if you think they'll find it useful. And I'll see you next week. No. 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 No.